So how do you install a set of auxiliary LED lights on your motorcycle? So that they're only powered when the ignition is turned on, and so you can also have a little switch on the handlebars to control them independently. Well, it seems like a lot of intimidating electrical work, but it isn't actually that difficult. Let's go over how we take care of that. So the cliff notes for this, let's get right into it. The way I did mine is I bought a two light LED auxiliary light harness. And this has got all the wires, this has got all the connectors, everything you need to install two LED lights onto your motorcycle while coming off of the battery and using a relay switch to control the switching action that happens from your handlebar. Also comes with both this relay and this little switch here too. And actually, if you go down into, this, into the description, I've got a full parts list for this. And I'm gonna to try to put together a wiring diagram and I'm gonna to try to put together a uh, schematic diagram too. But yeah, I mean, it's fairly simple. What this gives you is two LED lights that can be powered directly from the battery, but controlled from a constant source of ignition switch supply. And what this circuit demonstrates basically is that two switch, those two switches. So this is like your switch on your handlebar right here, and this is like the ignition on your bike. This is like the master power. So if I had these switched on, if I turned the bike's you know, key off, they would come off, right? All right, let's take a look at how this shakes out wiring wise. So I have the bike all stripped down here too, just so I could expose all the wiring harness. If you need to know how to do that, I've got a quick little video that you can check out that shows you how to basically field strip uh, the KLR 650. So um, the way this works out, like I mentioned, is I have my control for the LEDs right there on the handlebar. Now that's another switch that I use. I wired that in myself because I really like that switch. I find it's just easier um, to manipulate than the other one. That other one gets kind of stuck. Um, this here works with a, a relay. Now the relay I have, it's wired right up right there. Now you can see it with these wires going in. There's, it's kind of tucked in there. There's actually room for another one. I plan on putting another relay circuit in here too. And you can see this white wire here with its um, 15 amp fuse connects back directly to the battery right there. So that is my main line of power to the two LEDs that I have. There are one, two right there. And these are mounted up using a nice little bracket right there. And I bought that from Twisted Throttle. Well, again, I have a whole parts list for all of this that you guys will be able to check out. You can use to get some inspiration or you can just pack and buy this as a kit, basically, and put it all together. So you can see there's that white wire that comes in here. And basically there's a white wire and a black wire that'll connect to this uh, LED here. And that is branched off so that you get two. And these two lights are going to be in parallel. They're not in series, right? So they're going to take the same voltage across them, right? Because loads in parallel, the voltage across them will be the same, which is really good for LEDs because LEDs require a certain forward voltage to be able to turn on. And in this case, you get the max out of these guys when you're sitting at around, you know, 11.5 to 12.5 volts. Now, the trickiest part about this is finding your constant power source that's only active on the ignition. That was the front headlight, this fella right here. So you can see what I did is I put that nice red wire right in here and I just solder spliced right into it or a tap basically into it. And you can see that little connection there too is also part of the harness. And what this connects to is the switch. So we're back to the handlebar switch again. So I know it's a lot. It still seems a little intimidating, I know. So let's break it down a little bit further. All right, so let's take a look at this mess. <laughs> this is the uh, the wiring harness. This is a two LED wiring harness. And uh, you can buy these basically from Canadian Tire. You can buy these from Princess Auto. I'm sure Harbor Freight has some sort of equivalent. The idea is that you wanna to go to those websites and you wanna search for auxiliary light wiring harness and look for the one that says two LED. Or if you just wanna do one LED, I mean, just do one. But the way this shakes out is within all of this mess, there's really two circuits going on. 
there's this one here and then there's this one here now the way we have it set up here is that the LEDs are going to be powered off this thicker wire they're going to take their power directly from the battery so this section comes with two of these little fork connector things here and this goes on the battery now you'll notice right away one of these is definitely longer than the other so you don't necessarily need to terminate this back to the battery you can terminate this to a, a point of ground on your motorcycle so like the a part of the frame that has good continuity back to uh, the battery's negative terminal so one really good spot is there's actually a bolt over by the uh, horn actually where that connects to the frame this is actually really good ground you can pull this little um, cable harness clip off and you can put that ground in behind there and just tighten it on really good and this again you just put this on the battery and there's a little inline fuse in here too again whenever you're buying stuff like this always you know pop this stuff open to make sure the fuse is good so I'm looking at this the fuse is fine and this is a 20 amp fuse so the other side of this is where the LEDs connect and you can see you have two in here you have a white and a black and white is for the hot and black is for you know the return the ground and these you can see they're off of the one line so you can see how this is kind of like tapped in off of this one here so you can tell that these are now in parallel right this is a parallel circuit and the connections that are used here are little barrel connectors you can see that right there now what I would do is I would chop those off I mean you can use them if you want but I like using these little blade connectors here right these are, are my jam and that's what I do with mine I chop those off and I just crimp these on you can see here I use those blade connectors and then put some heat shrink tubing over top of it to make it a little bit more water resistant so that's that side of the circuit that's like the main power to it the other side of this circuit is where we get control power from so the control power goes to the switch and the switch is included here too and you see this is really cool they have nice little connectors so that it's really super simple you just have to like connect this stuff right so you have two ends on this you again have a, a ground which can be grounded to that area on the horn that I talked about or actually there's a really nice spot in behind uh, the instrument cluster I found a really good ground there that's where I grounded mine so this little screw here on the instrument cluster that is also a really good ground and you can test that with a multimeter for continuity if you want just to double check but that'll do it for you the other side of this is just just an empty piece of wire this is what you would tap into the headlight wire for your low beam headlight or your you know license plate um, lamp or your rear tail light I like the headlight for the auxiliary lights because it's up front but the breakdown of what happens here is that the relay is gonna get this it's like a coil right so it's got like normally open contacts so when that coil is energized those contacts close and those contacts closing represent you know this bigger wire circuit this power from the battery closing and having a complete line of current going out to the to the LEDs and the power that we use to energize that coil comes from over here it comes from the headlight line that we got that ignition current so whenever we push this button here we're energizing the coil here which closes the contacts here which gives you power to the LED which also allows it so that this can only be turned on when you have the ignition switch turned on because that's the only time this part of this wiring harness is going to get power so I know this is a crazy mess <laughs> but it's kind of great actually that you get a lot of this wire um, because it also allows you to be a little bit more flexible about where you put the wire so maybe your wiring harness is a little bit different so at the end of the day what do I end up getting I end up getting a power supply that is active only when the ignition is turned on and then I can activate my LED switch right up at the handlebars here all right so let's start talking about tapping into some to some wire and some techniques for doing that so once you find the wire that you do want to tap into and we'll say that this is the white wire and we'll say this red wire is the wire we want to get tapped into this line 
well, you got a couple options to do this. Now, one of the ones that I like the most is the, the solder tap, basically where you take a little bit of this Teflon white coating or this, this white wire covering here off, and then you strip this one here on the end, and then you just kind of like stick it in, and you solder it in place, and then you electrical tape it to seal it in to prevent it from the elements, or to keep it from the elements, and that way you have a really good secure one. The other way is to use the uh, the T-top slice. Um, so this is like the little thing that you can buy red is for, I think it's for like 18 to 22 gauge wire. Blue is like 16 to 14. I don't know, someone could correct me on that. I feel like I don't know the color coding right off the top of my head. Maybe I should. <laughs> but the T-top splice is a really easy way to do it. Essentially you have two ports here, one, two, that you put the wire um, that you wanna tap into in, and then you have a third one. Um, or you put that across and then you have a third one there that you put the wire that you want to tap into that wire in. Um, let me actually strip some of this a little bit. Twisty, twisty strip. And twisty, twisty strip. I just want to do that so I can have a point to test continuity after I'm done. There. So what you do is you set this fella inside here like that, right? See how it goes all the way across? And you take this other guy and you lay them inside. So I got all three in there, right? You can see how the essence of the, the tap in here. And then once you've done that, you kind of hold these two in place. And you're going to crush this blade down. Now that's the reason why I don't like the T-tap splice. Because it actually pretty much breaks the tapped into wire. So you've created a pretty... I mean, it's going to do the job for sure, but I mean like... It's not that great. Wow, listen to those knuckles crack. So once you get that all jammed in nice and flush, do you see how that's flush there now? You just lock this guy into place and you're done. And you can do a little tug test on uh, either end. You can even test this out. You can get the alligator clips on here. So let's say we'll, we want to test from the load here, the load side connection. And we want to see if that's got continuity which it does, right? And this should obviously have continuity because it's just the other end of the wire. So that works. I mean, until it doesn't, <laughs> right? I mean, nothing's gonna be pulling on the wire like that in your bike. But another thing is, is like, you know, I can, I can look into this and I can see metal. So, you know, water's gonna get in there. And you can fix that too. You can tape the, sh tape the crap out of this with like, electrical tape and that's fine. You know, that'll do the job. Don't worry about it. If you don't want to do soldering, this is this is totally acceptable. Just go out and buy some T-taps and, and get the job done and call it the day and enjoy your, enjoy your lights, really. But for me, I like to do I like to do the solder splice. So I'm going to show you how that's done. Solder kit up here. So with the solder splice, what you're going to do is you're going to end up coming in here and you're going to very gently make a break right here that it's hard to see I know but I've kind of broken it open a little bit I'm gonna do it again with a good decent amount up and this gets really hard once you start to get it near like within the bikes electrical system and then now that's that's tricked out there next thing you want to do is you got to be able to get that off which again is not that easy. But it's not impossible. So I'm just going to use a little scalpel. Once I get a little bit of it off, be nice and careful. I'm going to pry it out. So check that out. Got a nice exposed piece of wire. So next thing that I'll do is I'll come back to my wire that I want to tap in and I'm going to strip that off real good. I'll twist that up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a little hole into this with my scalpel like that. So you got that little hole in there. I'm going to pass that guy through. 
And once I get that through, I'm going to wrap that around in such a manner so that it closes that little hole up. Just like that. Looks neat, eh, with a little copper around it. So we'll get the old iron out here, which is already nice and heated up. There we go. And I'm gonna use this little bit of flux. I'm gonna cheat, put some flux on there. And then I'm just gonna heat up the wire. Am I on the solder? Not bad. Pretty shiny. I'd say it's fairly decent. No problem, eh? There's your solder splice. But that's that's how I did mine. That's how I like to do mine. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit crazier, but I find it's just really reliable. I have had zero issues with my LED auxiliary lights after doing that. There we go. So that's how I put my LED lights together. That's the circuit. You know, I, I really wanted to do this video because when I first wanted to get doing and installing LED auxiliary lights on the KLR650, I, I always seem to find like little bits and pieces of information all on the internet and on YouTube on how to do it. And I really had a hard time figuring out like how do I get it so that it can only come on when the ignition switch is turned on. But that's how you do it. So hopefully I've shortened the path <laughs> for somebody else who's looking to do the same thing. Again, the key takeaways from all this is your supply that you want to tap into, you could do it from the low beam headlight, you can do it from the tail light, and you can do it from the, uh, the license plate light there, the little lamp above the license plate light. Again, if I were to prioritize anyone for LED auxiliary lights, I would do the low beam headlight. And of course, that does open up another case, another scenario, like maybe I wanna add another accessory that also is off the ignition switch. You know, do I just keep taking off the, the low beam headlight? Do I use up everything? Well, no, you don't wanna do that. <laughs> you don't wanna just perforate your, uh, your electrical harness to add all sorts of accessories. There is a way to do it. You can create a 12 volt distribution that comes off of another tap from someplace else. And I am gonna do that. Hopefully I'll do a video about that too. So if that video has been done, maybe I'll think about it. Uh, maybe Future Dowski will, will link uh, that video here too for you. But I hope that helps you out. I mean, I, auxiliary lights, like LED lights like this, they have so many good purposes. You know, they, they make it easier to see at night, for, of course, but they also make you really visible on the trails. And when you're out on the trails like this, the last thing you want to do is come face to face with a side by side and just eat its front bumper. Oh, that'd be terrible. But if you're bright enough and you should make a lot of light, they can see you ahead of time and they'll slow down for you and they'll be a little bit more safe for you there too. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope it works out for you. Good luck. And until the next time we meet in the garage here, and until the next time we tinker around on the KLR650, the Silver Fox, well, until then. And if you want to see some adventures on the Silver Fox here with us, if you want to go for along for the ride when we have this guy out in the main uh, ride season, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and uh, join along in the ride group with us here. Anyway, until then, take care.